Hi, welcome to Mr. Knuckles Guitar Program. This is for beginners, like people that have never picked up a guitar before. I'm going to teach you right from square one how to hold it, how to hold your pick, how to read a chord diagram, etc., etc. So this particular video is the introductory video, and if you want to go straight to lesson one and start learning how to play, then just go to lesson one. I'll put a link to lesson one in this video and you can uh, go straight on. But if, you, if you'd like to know a little bit more about the basics because you're that brand new, then this video will help you through that. Also, I'm looking for feedback. I, uh, I'm putting this on Facebook. I'm not a Facebook guy. I'm not a social media guy at all. I'm looking for feedback. So if you're getting this on Facebook, please give me some feedback and let me know that you're with me on the program because I don't really want to spend my time making these videos if nobody's watching them. But if there are people watching them, I'm more than happy to make them. So uh, just give me a thumbs up or a like or whatever it is that you do on Facebook and uh, and let me know that you're with me. All right. I hope you get something out of this course because it is a fantastic thing to know how to do for the rest of your life, no matter what stage of life you're at. Uh, I've been doing this program with grade seven and eight students at school for 15 years now, and I have taught a lot of kids how to play guitar. But I guarantee if you put some time and effort into this program and you've got lots of time, you will get better. I can't promise that you're going to get as good as you want to, as quickly as you want to, and that's always a problem at school. Some of the kids bail out because they don't get enough out of it as quickly as they want to, and so they stop trying. But the ones that continue to try, a lot of them become really good guitarists. I've got some great guitarists at school. Uh, what you need for this program, obviously you need a guitar. Eventually you're going to need a capo, which is one of these things here. One of these things that you've probably seen if you've ever seen somebody playing guitar, right? It goes on the end of a guitar and I'll explain what that does later on when we start to use it. You need a pick. A tuner is another really good idea. A tuner, there's all different types. I would suggest a clip-on one. It just clips to the headstock of your guitar. And uh, and I'll show you how to use that, you know, sometime during the program as well. Another option for tuning is I will just play the notes and you can try and tune your guitar to the notes of my guitar. That probably won't be perfect, but it'll be good enough. All right. So you don't need to spend money on a tuner yet. All right. Those are the things that you need to get started. How do you hold a guitar? Well, you've seen people holding guitars. They hold them in all different ways. You hold it however is comfortable for you. I would say that you don't want to hold the guitar in such a way that your elbow is above the neck of the guitar, all right? You want to bring the guitar neck up and even bring your elbow down a little bit so that your elbow is below the neck of the guitar. And the reason for that is if you hold it like this with your elbow way up, then your wrist has to bend way up like that to form chords. Figure out what's comfortable to you. But I would suggest that that's one thing you want to do is keep the guitar in a sort of an, the, the neck of the guitar in an, on an upright angle. Next thing, arm movement when you're strumming or strumming movement, if you want to call it that. I would say the main movement of strumming is that motion, all right? It allows you to, to drag the pick over the strings on an angle as opposed to straight up and down over the strings. And you can hear that's different than that. All right, and you want to get that kind of a motion. I'm doing it slowly, but you can see my, my wrist is rolling back and forth as I strum, okay? And this, this program is gonna be mainly strumming, but that's one thing that you can just start to practice right off the bat is just hold the strings down, all right? That's called muting the strings, and see how fast you can get going, all right? You'll notice that if you just use your elbow joint, it's hard to get going fast, as opposed to that motion, all right? That's the motion that, I mean, the elbow joint's part of it, but a lot of rolling, it's basically rolling your forearm back and forth, all right, like that, all right? And just kind of combine all those movements together to get a nice, smooth strumming action. Okay, we're gonna talk about fretting the guitar. Fretting the guitar is pushing the strings down, okay? And most of you will be fretting with your left hand. We call that right-handed playing. It's the hand that you're strumming with that designates whether you're playing right-handed or left-handed. If you're playing left-handed, uh, what a drag for you because everything's backwards. Everything that I'm going to say about playing is going to be backwards and kind of upside down for you. I'm going to be talking about right-handed playing, fretting the guitar with your left hand. All right? You'll hear this 
called fingering the guitar. I avoid that term, as you can imagine, in grade 7 and 8 classes, but uh, the proper terminology is fretting the guitar. How do you fret the guitar? Well, there's a couple things that are very important. First of all, you want to use the tips of your fingers, which becomes a real drag because the tips of your fingers are going to get really sore. They're super sensitive. There's not a lot of padding there, right? It would be so easy if we could play the guitar like this, but it just doesn't work. So you have to play with the ends of your fingers. You're going to get sore fingers and you'll be fine after a month. The next thing is you want to keep your knuckle joint in your fingers rolled over so that that allows your the ends of your fingers to come down straight onto the neck of the guitar. And by the way, I'm going to teach you just kind of campfire guitaring. Classical guitarists would play totally different. But all the chords we're going to play in this program are going to be nice, easy chords to play. And you can play like this. And so that's how I'm going to teach you. Okay, guitar chord diagrams. Very important that you know how to use these and interpret them because you can figure out any chord in the world as long as you can understand the diagram and figure out how to use it to play the chord. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at this section of the guitar neck oriented this way, which is kind of weird because obviously we don't play it this way. But that's just the way guitar chord diagrams have evolved, I guess. For you lefties, it's unfortunate, but you're going to have to completely switch the guitar chord diagram around. Notice that this string, the small string, is on the right of the diagram, and it becomes the bottom string when you play the guitar. All right? So the strings are numbered from one up to six, and... The notes that you play, if you play the bottom string open, it's an E note, all right? String number one is the E string. You can see the, um, the letters on the top, and it goes E, B, G, D, A, E, or a mnemonic you can use is every bald guy deserves an education. Remember, we go from right to left on the diagram, and we go from the bottom up when you're holding the guitar. But you lefties will have to switch everything around because for you, unfortunately, the bottom string and the smallest string is on the left. So you have to flip everything around on the diagram and that must be a huge drag, but that's just the way it is. All right, you've got the big thick line at the top of the diagram is this thing, which is called the nut of the guitar. You have other horizontal lines, which are called frets. You have dots here and there where you are supposed to put your fingers. You have the, uh, the string names or the string notes, if you want to call it that, at the top of the diagram. You have numbers at the bottom of the diagram that indicate what finger you use to play that, that dot. So finger one, two, three, and four. Okay, and you may see X's on some of the diagrams, and that just means that you have to mute those strings out or that those strings are not included in that chord. When you watch the lessons for individual chords, I will show you how to mute out the different strings that need to be muted if there are any. So I realized that was a long first video and there was a lot of information. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you're willing to continue. I can't do anything to motivate you other than to say, if you spend some time at it, it doesn't take long before you start to get half decent. And when you get it, start getting half decent, man, there is nothing like playing along with a song or playing along with some other friends, having some friends sing with you, getting together with other people that play guitar. I mean, there's so many options. If you're musical, if you like to sing, if you like to just listen to music, there's this just opens up a brand new world for you. And especially if you're young and you're starting early, it's a lifetime of enjoyment. Playing guitar is just such a great thing. So uh, I really hope you stick with it. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a great big song list that will show you the songs that we're going to be trying to cover in the next little while. All right. Um, so have a look at it. And if there's songs that you don't care for, you know, there are all kinds of other people that that teach guitar online for free, a lot of them. You can find somebody else, no offense taken, obviously, but uh, if you see some songs that you really like, I guarantee it won't take long to start getting to play them. All right, so good luck with it, and see you on the next video.